Oh, I was just gonna say it was. It was gonna say oh, it's. It can't play it. <laughs> that would that would be very cruel. A cruel mistress. Oh, uh, that. How does the audio sound to you? Good. It's good to know. That guy is boss. Oh yeah. So since uh, we are playing this. Since I am playing this, at the very least, I need to ask... We are playing. <laughs> well, I mean, you're watching me play, so technically you're playing it. Uh, I have to ask, have you ever seen a Godzilla movie before? I never have, but if it, the only Godzilla I watch is the one that people test it being a, a Godzilla film. It's, uh, it's the uh, one that Oh, it was the, the bad one made. that people called that people are calling Zilla. Uh, what what is he called? It's Matthew Broderick as one of the stars. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's I'm pretty sure that's Zilla. Yeah, he's the shamed and bastardized version of Godzilla that isn't actually well, actually he was canon for a very short period of time. Toho actually bought the rights to that Godzilla and put them and put him in one of their movies just so that he could be murdered by the original Godzilla on screen. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they rebranded him too. That's where he got the name Zilla because he was originally called Godzilla from the because the American movie called him that. But Toho bought the rights to him, rebranded him as Zilla and then murdered him on screen. <laughs> He was only on screen then, though, for uh, about. He was only oh. on screen for like. It's playing again. It doesn't matter. It's gonna skip it. It it was only on screen. Whoops. For maybe not even ten seconds, and it was in. It was dead. <laughs> That's how long it lasted. <laughs> oh God. He's the shadow. Toho he's, uh, is legendary. He's the shadow of the head. The char. Oh no, he's no oh he's no Shadow the Hedgehog. I'll tell you this right now. He is a fan made Sonic character that Sonic literally just punches in the face and just ex and then it just explodes. That's that's what just ha that's what happened. <laughs> like, like uh Sonic or what just uh, what like a saw as yeah. in Sonic or or the Uganda Knuckles. Yeah, it's ba basically <laughs> Zilla is Uganda Knuckles. <laughs> Do you, Do you know, know the way? way. And Do you, you know get the punched. Way. Do you all know the way, Bruda? He <laughs> <All laughs> right. got punched, and that's the end of the story. Yep. So, well, this is uh, this is Godzilla for the PS4. Originally on the PS3 in Japan, but then was ported to the, but then was in a sense kind of remastered to the PS4 and then brought to America, only for a few months later, for, like, maybe a few months later, for it to be uh, uh, sent to Japan once again. So Japan got a PS3 game, then it got remastered and sent to America, and then that remaster got sent back to Japan. <laughs> quite, quite, uh... Quite the story. Not quite, uh, quite the story, yeah. I'm... Uh, my apologies for my speech and pen. You know how it is, and you've been on the you've been, you've been on this channel before. Channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but anybody who anybody the the few anybody who actually watches this, this channel, I will, will know you by now. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true. So, 
I might as well go over the different modes that are here. Obviously, there's God of Destruction mode, which has several other modes in it. We'll be going into that first, because that's obviously the first one. King of Kaiju mode, which is basically just a, uh, like, five... I think it's five rounds of three of... Five rounds of fighting uh, random monsters that you are given to fight. You get to choose the monster of your choice. Versus mode, which... Stupidly enough is online only. It doesn't have this game. The one thing that this game is missing is a local multiplayer mode for you to play with other people in your in the house with you. They don't this game doesn't have that for whatever ungodly reason. It does not have it. It only has online mode, which is kind of weird, but you it's know. kind of sucky actually. Yeah, yeah. I've never actually been able to test out the online mode before, because every time I've played this game, I've never had uh, PS Plus. But since I have PS Plus right now, it now it may actually be able to play online mode and see how that works. Evolution mode is exactly what it sounds like. Pretty much. You evolve the different monsters that you possess. We'll be going into that later after we visit God of Destruction mode. Diorama mode, nobody gives a crap about. Nobody cares about. It's... <laughs> it's it's literally just to like uh, make your own Godzilla scenes. That's it. <laughs> your dream Godzilla movie. Yep, not even a movie. It's they're just dioramas in a location. That's it. Nothing else. To oh, uh, Smash Bros. did that already. So <laughs> stickers and trophies and <laughs> yeah, and all that jazz. Kaiju guide. I have a plan for this. I plan on going over at least one of these after at least one of these after every episode. And if there are more of these than there are episodes, then I'll just go over the rest of them in a bonus episode. But Kaiju Guide is your Wikipedia in this game. Knowing you, you've got you'll be nerding out. Oh, I've already read it like just five times. Just the heck of it. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're a total nerd. <laughs> So let's jump into God of Destruction mode. So God of Destruction mode has several has several other modes in it, as you can very clearly tell. There's go ashore, invade, defend, resume progress, the tutorial, rankings, and data entries. Data entries we won't be able to do because you only get to do that once, and I did that when I first bought this game. But data entries are basically in every single level in this game, there are three data points that you can activate to be able to unlock a special monster at the end of it for getting all the data entries so that's what those are I'll explain what that monster is after when we do go ashore uh, defend basically you get to choose a very specific monster um, they give you a certain certain monsters that you can choose to defend humanity uh, fight off another monster the least stuff you destroy will is the benefit in this. Invade allows you to fight as practically any monster you want that is not in defend. Any monster that isn't in defend is in invade. But go ashore is the story mode of this game. And yes, it has a story mode. Well, gee, I wonder what that guy's doing against that building, huh? Hmm, I don't know. How about we, uh, we find out? Technically, the beginning of story mode is in tutorial. So we will be doing that first. It was 60 years ago. That was when Godzilla first appeared. A 50 meter tall kaiju that laid ruin to a city center. Godzilla may not have been fast on his feet, but the threat he posed to mankind was undeniable. So as you can guess from tutorial mode, it teaches you the tutorial. <laughs> we know that Godzilla's claws and his powerful tail constitute his primary means of attack. We 
also have it on record that he used his oversized upper body to charge at his target. He also lets loose atomic breath, a blast attack from his mouth which can turn a town into a sea of fire in seconds. That's totally not hyper beam. Oh no. <laughs> no, no, this is this is no hyper beam. This is all the biological data we currently have on record. But we know very little about how or why he possesses such unimaginable powers. At the time, Godzilla returned to the sea at the dear cost of Professor Sarazawa's life. So many paid the ultimate sacrifice back then. But humanity gained two valuable things as a result. The first is G-Energy. As a result of our studies, we discovered the very essence of Godzilla's life force and turned it into a powerful fuel for humanity. Now, without G-Energy, our civilization would fall apart within a very short span of time. The second is G-Force. If the worst should happen in Godzilla or anything of equal threat to mankind should ever appear again, G-Force is there to remove the threat. And that's where you come in, ma'am. As far as the public knows, G-Force is merely a response unit created to handle disasters. If you learn anything, you'll contact me immediately, correct? So now, after 60 years, there are signs that Godzilla has returned. I'll give you the short explanation, ma'am. Should Godzilla ever appear again, we will need you and the cabinet to set the disaster level. We at G-Force will then respond accordingly. So I'm ultimately responsible for our strategy to Godzilla. I will not hesitate to act, soldier, although it may very well cost me my political career. It's Kyogre! Aw, oh, damn it. <laughs> How dare you. <laughs> How dare you go far as ridiculing my beloved uh, basin Pokemon with a uh, over mutated iguana. Um, excuse me? He's a mutated dinosaur called Godzilla Saurus. Thank you very much. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Godzilla? What do you think, sister? We cannot determine whether it is the same Godzilla as in our records. What does Godzilla want? Oh no, not the generator. It must be the G-Energy Generator. It's the only explanation as to why he chose to come ashore in this area. We discovered G-Energy because of him, but it turns out the stuff is his favorite meal. Maybe Godzilla holds a grudge. After all, the reason he was born in the first place was... Uh, uh, forgive me. I spoke out of turn. It's fine. We need to consider all lines of thinking here. We are going to disaster level one. We must protect our country. Moving to commence level one response, ma'am. Oh, this is the game. First squad, 
Welcome to Godzilla, where we destroy a bunch of shit. <laughs> I didn't hit that. Hit it! Don't shoot the helicopters! <laughs> you can there's... aim from the air, huh? Yeah, there's a better way to destroy the helicopters. There's another- there's something that they don't teach you in here because you have to unlock it. But when you do, you can press the R2 button and do this. It's an atomic pulse. It allows you to destroy everything in a, ra in a radius around Godzilla. So basically, if there are a bunch of helicopters around you, then you can literally just blast that and it will destroy any of them that are near you in the area. Now, I am a lot- like the Unleash meter. Yeah. Now, I am a lot more overpowered than I should be because I have upgraded Godzilla to the max already. So he is already at max power as of playing this right now. I would re would have reset the game to, uh, to play him at normal levels, but I have done so much in this game that I don't think I would be happy with myself if I did that. <laughs> So if you want to see some people play Great. this at, uh, I think at the beginning level, I recommend SGB, um, Su uh, Super Gaming Brothers, because I know they played this game, and I'm pretty sure they played it at, at level one. So if you want to see somebody play it from the beginning, when Godzilla is weak, super weak, then that's who I recommend. <laughs> uh, I like playing as upgraded Mac. Because I just figure you get everything right at the get go. Yeah. Also, can show you uh, what you're what you're destined to get when you get this game, if anyone decides to get this game. I personally think this game is better than uh, the uh, GameCube version, which was Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. Which I don't know why, for whatever reason, on the GameCube, any fighting game has melee in it. I mean, there is Super Smash Brothers melee, and then there is Godzilla Destroy All Monsters melee. The hell was the, the hell's with that? <laughs> hey, I got I got the game myself, and I gotta say it's pretty fun. Yeah. It, But anyway, I should probably explain what's actually going on. So, in Go Ashore or Invade, because both are technically the same except Invade you can play with a different monster, you basically destroy as much crap as you possibly can, and the little diamonds that come at you is G energy. And you'll see at the bottom, you'll see height. It is now at 54.25 meters. That is how big Godzilla is. The more G energy you get, the bigger he will become. And eventually, Godzilla will be bigger than this generator that is that you see in front of you, right here. He will be bigger than that, eventually. Right now, he's smaller than it, but he will be bigger. And, I mean, way bigger. It's obviously very, very obvious to see how big he'll be. But we'll see when, that, when we get to that. So, uh, before I destroy the generator, I will go over... Uh, everything else. There's the temperature meter, which obviously you may have noticed as I've been using it. That is basically your ability to use your secondary ability, which is Godzilla's atomic pulse, and Godzilla's uh, atomic breath. If that's empty, you cannot use either of them and you must wait. And you must wait to use them again. There's also the fury mode gauge that you saw in the corner just for above the temperature gauge just for a moment. That is uh, basically your uh, your combo meter. So the more combo, the more of a combo you have uh, racked up of how much you can destroy, the more G energy you will actually obtain from everything that you destroy. So basically, it helps you destroy stuff. The disaster level obviously uh, shows how much, how often, um, if the uh, stronger stuff will come at you, stronger helicopters, stronger planes, uh, stronger tanks how much more of a resistance humanity is going to put up against you. Then there's 
the destruction rate, which you'll see is at 100%. The destruction rate tells you when everything of importance that can be used to gain G energy has been destroyed in the area. So right now I'm at 100, so that means I've destroyed everything. There's nothing else to destroy except for the generator. The generator does not count toward the destruction rate, so if you are missing something, then it is not the generator. Also, tanks and helicopters do not count towards the destruction rate, except there is one exception, and I will try to see if I can get that exception. And last but not least, you'll see the microchips in the corner. That is the, uh, oh god, those that's the data points. You can actually, after you've collected all the data points, you can activate this at any time, I'm pretty sure. No, you have to be in the data area, actually. So you see the little camera, if I do that... Hi mom, I'm a camera! <laughs> so, you actually have a helicopter viewing Godzilla, and you can actually play like this if you want to. But, I already have the data point. So I can just press that and it'll like pretend to be gathering the data points, but I already have it, so it literally doesn't matter. But you press options to regather the data if you want if you want to regather it. You don't have to, but you can. And it'll take a screenshot. So if there's a screenshot that you think is cool from the helicopter, then you can take it. That's basically all that is now. Because I gathered all the data points. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> It's nothing more fun than watching, uh, taking pictures of a giant monster. So there is one final thing I want to talk about while I'm destroying this generator, and that's the fact that Godzilla actually does have a block button. They do not tell you you have this. For whatever reason, if you press the L1 and R1 buttons together... I'll back off just a little bit. Godzilla will roar. That's your block button. <laughs> <laughs> also, the L and the L1 and R1 buttons also rotate Godzilla. So you press them individually to rotate, and you press them together to block. So just throwing that out there. Give me the generator! have hit zero Godzilla is far larger than when he came ashore ma'am it must be the purity of the matter he absorbed it's accelerating his growth you were right he came ashore in search of food incredible but I doubt it'll be enough to satisfy 60 years of hibernation I wish we knew what Godzilla was thinking right now do you think he will search for another food source and I have to worry about the people's doubts. I hope they don't call for my head. There's no one else in politics who's equipped to handle such difficult decisions. <laughs>